we lift up our voices, O oh God, as we lift up praises to you, O oh Lord, as we worship you, Father. We ask that you would come down, O oh Lord, as our praises go up, O oh Lord. Let your presence come down, O oh Lord. Let your blessings come down, O oh Lord. Meet us here tonight, O oh God. Lord, we have needs, O oh Lord, that are represented all across this house by each and every person here that has come into this place tonight, Father. Lord, and we ask that you would meet them, O oh God. We know that you can do it, and we know that you're working on it, O oh Lord. We express our faith, O oh God, by offering it up to you, O oh Lord, by giving it to your hands, O oh God. We know that you're going to do it, Father. We thank you for it, Jesus. Lord Jesus, we're here to worship you tonight. We're here to draw closer to you, Father. We're here to seek your face, and we ask that you would meet us, O oh God. Lord Jesus, you said that in, your, in your word, Father, you said that if we would seek you, O oh Lord, that we would find you, O oh God, if we would search for you with all of our heart. That's why we're here tonight, Father, because we're searching for you with all of our hearts, O oh God. Lord Jesus, we want to show you that we love you with all of our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our strength. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Jesus, and we want you to move into this place, oh God. Lord Jesus, we don't have to have a huge crowd. Lord, we don't have to have loud music, God. We don't have to have the most talented people, Lord, all across the nation, even though I think that we do, Father. Lord Jesus, we don't have to have the most talented young people, oh Lord, even though I think that we do. We don't have to have the, the wisest youth pastor, oh God. We don't have to have the best preacher, oh Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. I know that I'm not that, oh God, Lord Jesus, but what we do have to have is a desire to know you more, oh God, and that's what we have, oh God. That's what we possess, Father. We have a desire to know you more, oh God. We have a desire to seek your face, oh Lord. We have a desire to see you do great things in our lives, Jesus. We want to draw closer to you, Father, and so we welcome you into this place, Jesus. We welcome you into this place. Have your way, Father. Your kingdom come. Your will be done here tonight, Jesus. Come on, can we lift up a shout of praise? Clap your hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. Shout with the voice of triumph. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. As they come to lead us in worship, I would ask if we all could, as much as possible, move forward and move in as much as possible so that we can all be united together, if you don't mind, and worship with us in this spirit as we open up this service in Jesus' name.
Come on, church. I know we can do better than that. The presence of the Lord is here in this house tonight. We've just been singing about it. And I know that maybe you're used to a bigger crowd on a Wednesday night or on a Sunday during service. And maybe that's why you're hesitating to come and worship. But the presence of the Lord is in this place. And let me tell you, you are not here for your neighbor. You are not here for the person that is seated next to you. They were just singing a song, here I am in your presence. It's not about the person sitting next to you. It's about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we have a chance and an opportunity tonight to come and worship here in his presence. And he is here in this house. And he wants to meet our needs. And he wants to reach out to us. And he wants to do something mighty in our lives. And all he's asking us to do is reach out for him. So now I'm going to ask them to sing that again. Sing that again, worship team. And as they sing it again, if you really mean what these words say, then I want you to throw back your head. Throw up your hands and I want you to worship. If you have to worship in your seat, that's fine. If you want to come forward, that's fine. If you want to dance, that's fine. But lift your hands to the Lord and give him the worship that he's worthy of. Come on and sing it.
let's do that for just a moment. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Before we go any further in this service, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Father. Oh, we lift you up, Jesus. You alone are holy. You alone are worthy. You are mighty. You are excellent, oh God. Oh, you are an awesome, awesome God. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, worship team. Hallelujah, Jesus. The presence of the Lord is in this place. He's here in this house tonight. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Before we go any further into the service, I'm going to ask that our ushers would come. We're going to take up an offering. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And while they are getting ready to come, uh, Brother Waldrop, I met you a little bit earlier before service, but you were holding out on me. I have since learned that you are a preacher. So uh, while our ushers are coming, I'm going to put you on the spot, and I'm going to ask you to testify for just a moment about the good things that the Lord is doing. I thank Jesus for the Holy Ghost. I'm thankful that he gave me something to shout about. Hallelujah. I know you look at other people and you think, how can somebody be speaking in tongues and somebody can be just sitting on the pew? But you got to want it for yourself. Hallelujah. And I'm thankful for everything that God has done for me. I'm thankful for what he's done for these kids. And I'm just thankful y'all keep praying for me and I'll pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. If you're thankful to be in the house of God tonight, say amen. Man, if you would all stand with me, we're going to say a prayer over this offering. My ushers are running a little bit behind, but that's all right. We can still pray. Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your spirit and your presence. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in this place tonight. We thank you for the word, oh Lord. Lord, we ask that you would anoint this offering. Bless it. Multiply it for your kingdom and your purpose, oh Lord. Bless the gift and the giver, oh God. Bless those that have none to give. Thank you, Jesus. Do it for your power and your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated while the ushers are coming. Um, before I get to the message, and I guess before we receive our offering, um, here they come. Go ahead and take it up, fellas. Thank you. Everybody give a hand to our ushers. Amen. Y'all can go out and receive it. Going out, Brother Nick. Going out. Going out. All right. Um, so there was going to be a youth fundraiser tomorrow for the uh, North American Youth Congress. It was a car wash from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Due to the weather conditions, uh, it is supposed to thunderstorm tomorrow. So due to that, uh, we are going to be postponing that. The new tentative date for that is going to be two weeks from tomorrow on June the 22nd, Saturday, June the 22nd, and that is also from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. So spread the word, share it on Facebook, on other forms of social media, get the word out there to all your friends and family members. This car wash is uh, going to support the youth. It is specifically for NAYC, but for those of you that are youth that are not going to NAYC, you come and help anyways. Those funds will go towards something else for you later in the year. Um, and there is no specific price that we are setting for this car wash. It is to be a donation-only car wash. So you pay what you feel to pay when you come and get your car washed. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many of you love and support the youth? Amen. All right, I know I do. I kind of have to. It's my job. Uh, but no, I, I love it. Uh, I'm thankful to be a part of this ministry. I'm thankful to be working with youth. Um, it's my heartbeat. And uh, while we're just talking about announcements, I may as well go ahead and remind you that the following weekend, 
which will be the last weekend in June, June the 30th, there will be a spaghetti dinner for the youth that will benefit uh, NAYC as well. And that will take place after service. And it is uh, marketed on our screen here as a 4th of July celebration spaghetti dinner. Um, the prices are up there, so pay attention to that. Bring your whole family, bring all your friends, tell them to come get a cheaper meal than you would get elsewhere and a better tasting one. Amen. And now I am going to come and preach to you. I believe that the Lord has given me a word for tonight. Um, so if you would stand with me and take out your Bibles, um, we are going to turn to the book of Matthew, chapters 26 and 27. In Matthew chapter 26, we are going to be reading from verses 14 through 16. And in Matthew chapter 27, we are going to read from verses 3 through 5. So again, Matthew chapter 26, verses 14 through 16. And Matthew chapter 27, verses 3 through 5. If you have it, say amen. If you don't have it, catch up with us. We're going on. Matthew chapter 26, then one of the twelve called Judas Iscariot went unto the chief priests and said unto them, what will ye give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they covenanted with him for 30 pieces of silver. And from that time, he sought opportunity to betray him. If you'll turn over to Matthew 27 verses three through five. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? See thou to that. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. If you will put your Bibles down and lay them down behind you and pray with me for the next few moments. Uh, Lord Jesus, we thank you, O oh God, for your spirit. We thank you for your presence in this place. God, we thank you for your word. Lord Jesus, you've anointed your word. You've spoken it, O oh God. I ask, O oh Lord, that you would anoint these lips of clay, O oh God. Help me to speak what you have for me, O oh Lord, what you have for this congregation tonight, O oh Lord. Let your word and your anointing flow through me, O oh God. Lord Jesus, I give myself to you as a willing vessel, O oh God, to be used, O oh God. I pray that you would pour out of me, O oh Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, O oh Lord, our hearts and our minds to understand and know you, O oh God. Lord, let your word fall on good ground, O oh Lord, and let it bring forth fruit exceeding abundant, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray, and all the church say amen. 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 You can be seated. I would like to preach to you on the next few minutes, for the next few minutes on this topic. What is your price? What is your price? In our text tonight in Matthew chapter 26, we find one of Jesus' chosen twelve, a man by the name of Judas Iscariot, going to the chief priests, and he is seeking an opportunity to betray Jesus, and he has asked the chief priests what they would pay him in order to do so. Now, this was one of the chosen twelve. This wasn't even one of the 70. This wasn't one of the many multitudes that followed him randomly throughout Scripture. This was one of his chosen 12, one of the men that he chose out of everybody else that had spent the last three years in the closest relationship with Jesus, closer to anybody else. He had probably sat around campfires with him and joked with him. He had eaten with him. He had broken bread with him. He had been through uh, sleepless nights with him. They'd been discussing things long hours into the night and into the early morning, seeing the sun come up. This man was one of the few that got to see Jesus and got to have the parables opened up to him. And yet now he is seeking to betray this man that is called the Christ. This was one of the 12 that stood in the boat when Jesus walked on the water and would have walked past them. But when he stepped into the boat, the wind and the waves were calm. This was one of the 12 that went and collected the baskets of fish and bread when the multitude had been fed. He saw the leftovers. 
This was one of the men that had his eyes open to the parables that the multitudes could not understand. When the disciples came and said, Lord, explain this to us, this was one of the men that had that parable open and had that explanation straight from the Lord's mouth. This was one of the men that stood, and when Jesus said, Whom do you say that I am? And Simon Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. This was one of the men that was there to hear Jesus say, You have said it, and blessed are you, Simon, because that's exactly who I am. This man knew that Jesus was the Messiah. And yet we find in Matthew chapter 26, that this close friend of Jesus is now seeking to betray him. And what is the price that he asked? It was 30 pieces of silver. I'm given to believe in our text that this wasn't just something that a spur of the moment decision. I, I can't believe that Judas had seen all of these miracles and all of a sudden decided that it was the time to betray Jesus. I just can't think that there was anything that Jesus could do that would make him so upset in one instant that he would forget everything that had happened, everything that he had experienced, and decide, okay, this man has got to go. There is something wrong with him. I have to believe that it was a buildup over time and that there was something in Judas's spirit that could not allow him to, uh, to view the miracles and could not allow him to remember the good things. And, and he had something in his spirit that maybe caused him to be bitter. I, I don't know what it was. And again, I, I don't have any specific scriptural basis for this. I'm just telling you what I see when I read the scripture, what, what my thinking is when I'm reading the scripture. There's another gospel that says that Jesus kept, Judas kept the purse of the disciples, so he kept the money. And if you read the text in our chapter 26 before this passage of scripture was when the woman had come and anointed Jesus' feet and his head and had cried her tears on him and had washed his feet with her tears and anointed him and had broken that alabaster box and of that precious ointment. And the disciples asked, why? Why would she waste this ointment like this? You know, it could have been sold and given to the poor. I, and, and Jesus said, she did it for me, and, and she'll be remembered for this. And immediately after that is when we pick up in verse 14, and it says Judas went to the chief priests. So maybe Judas had a little bit of greed for money. Maybe he wanted something a little bit more. Uh, maybe he dipped into the purse every now and then and got a little bit more. Or there are some scholars that believe that he was uh, wanting Jesus to take over Israel again. He was wanting him to overthrow the Roman government at that time. He was wanting a revolution. And instead, Jesus came and was a, a peace speaker and was a miracle worker. And he allowed himself to go through a hardship and persecution. So he wasn't the military might. Maybe, maybe that's what Judas was looking for, and he was dissatisfied with what he got. But whatever the case, he made the decision, I am going to betray Jesus. But I'm not just going to betray him. I'm going to do it, and I'm going to make a little something out of it. Because Jerusalem at this time is, is crowded. There's going to be a lot of people. We're coming upon the feast day. They're going to have problems finding Jesus. I'm, but I know where he's going to be. Because I'm a part of the inner circle. So I'll be the man on the inside. That's how I'll market myself to the chief priests. That's, uh, that's how they will know that I mean what I say. Because I will give them to him. And I know where he'll be before anybody else does. And so G Judas goes to the chief priests and he says, What will you give me and I will betray him to you? I know that you're after him. I know that you don't like the things that he said. Your attitude and the, the comments that you have made when you have confronted Jesus has made that clear. I can see it all over your faces. So I'm telling you right now, I am one of the 12. You know, you're not hearing me, priests. I'm one of the 12. Okay? There were 12 men that Jesus chose to be close to him, and I'm one of them. I know Jesus' plans. I know he's coming to Jerusalem. I know that that he's wanting to celebrate the Passover. And I know the places that he frequents. 
I know where he'll be with the rest of his disciples. So tell me, what will you give me? Because I'm not going to do it for free. What will you give me? And I'll turn him over to you. And so they covenanted with him for 30 pieces of silver. And they gave it to him. They counted it out. They gave him 30 pieces of silver. And Judas took that and he's like, all right, now I'm going to look for a good opportunity. And I'm going to turn Jesus over to him. Whatever happens after that, that, that's what happens. This is my decision. What is significant about 30 pieces of silver? There's different schools of thought on that. Um, it depends on what the pieces of silver were. Uh, most people think that it was equivalent to maybe about a month's wage. Um, could have been more, could have been less. Uh, but in the Old Testament, in the book of Exodus, 30 pieces of silver was the cost of a slave. When an animal had killed the slave of another owner, the person that owned the animal was supposed to pay the slave's owner 30 pieces of silver to redeem the cost of that slave. You just turned Jesus over for the cost of a slave, a dead slave. I mean... I got to think that if I was going to extort some people for Jesus, who I watched walk on water, who I watched raise up Lazarus out of a tomb, I have to think that if I'm going to extort some people, I'm going to get a good sum of money. But so desperate and bitter and hurt and angry was Judas that he jumped at the first thing that they gave him, 30 pieces of silver. He didn't even go for the cost of the, the precious oil and ointment that he was so upset about being broken and not sold to the poor. According to what we find in scripture, that was at least worth a year's wages. And Judas settled for maybe a month's. But they counted it out to him and they gave it to him. And so he went and we know what happened. He he gave Jesus to them. He turned them over to him in, in the Garden of Gethsemane. He betrayed his friend with a kiss. He was close to him, so he was able to get close to him and lean in. He said, Hail, Master. And Jesus called him friend. And then he turned him over. But then... Something happened. Jesus was taken before the chief priests and the elders, and they accused him. And they sought a reason to take him to Pontius Pilate and to have him crucified. And eventually, through their own human means, they felt that they succeeded in that. And when Judas saw that Jesus was condemned in Matthew chapter 27, the first thing he did was take that bag of silver back. He took that bag of silver back to the temple, back to the sanctuary where he had struck that deal with the religious leaders of the day. And he cast it down at their feet. I have betrayed the innocent blood. There was remorse. Realization had come to Judas. And they said, well, so what? Go deal with that yourself. And you know what he did? He left that money there. And he was so distraught, he went out and killed himself. 
Now I can see the looks on your faces. You're all looking and you're, it's truly, you know, sad. It's, it's disrupting. But how does this relate to me, Brother Michael? What are, what are you, what are you getting at? What are you driving at? Every one of us in this house tonight has been Judas at one time or another. We've all betrayed Jesus. We've all betrayed the innocent blood. What was the price? What did we get out of it? Too often we find ourselves in a place where we have a choice whether it be facing temptation or whether it be uh, somebody asking us a question out in public, whether it be a denial or whatever it is, we face a choice and too often we make the wrong choice and we betray Jesus and too often the cost is far less than what we think it is. Young people, when you are in school, and somebody asks about your identity and they ask you about the God that you worship and they ask you why you dress the way that you do and why the way why you act the way that you do and and why you don't talk the way that other people talk you have an opportunity then and there to stand up and too many times we throw it off on on something else when we're faced with temptations, when nobody else is watching, because that's when it comes. The scripture says every man is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. So when we're drawn away of our own lust and we're alone and nobody else is watching, that's when we're tested. And too often, no matter what it is, when, when God gives us every possible way to get out of that temptation, to face that temptation, to resist the devil, and he will flee. Too often, we make that wrong choice, and we fall into that temptation. We fall into sin, and the wages of sin is death. Young person, you may think that it's okay. You may think that there's... a the pleasure of sin for a season. You may enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, but trust me, there is coming a day of reckoning and that sin will no longer be pleasure because the wages of sin is death. And we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We all face death. That's why Jesus went to the cross and that's why we have betrayed him because his blood is on our hands. It's on my hands. Jesus didn't go to the cross because the chief priests and elders conspired against him with Judas and the people chose Barabbas over him. Jesus went to the cross so that I could stand here tonight and preach this message. Jesus went to the cross so that you could sit here tonight and he could work on your heart and your life. He went to the cross so that he could have a relationship with you. If nobody else ever came to the Lord, if none of his disciples chose to follow him, if nobody was there in the upper room on the day of Pentecost, he still would have come for you. So I ask you, how much will you betray Jesus for? I was driving on the way to work the other day, and I felt God begin to de deal with me. And I was talking to him, and I was praying. Typical prayer. God, I, I want more of you in my life. I want to know you more. I want you, I want you to take over in my life, to, you know, every aspect. And my job, my family, my ministry, you know, help me to be the man that you want me to be. I, I want to know you. 
my desire is for you. And I felt like God spoke to me in that moment and he said, show me. And since I was on my way to work, immediately I thought, how can I show him today? And, you know, I'm driving right now. And so I thought, oh, well, I, I, I take a lunch break. Usually I sit on my lunch break and I, I eat or I play games on my phone or I uh, catch up on social media or I catch up on uh, streaming service apps that I have on my phone. That's usually what I do on my, my lunch hour, you know, that take my time away from all the crazy people at the bank. And so I was like, okay, all right, well, since I'm thinking of this, I, it can't be, can't be, you know, a coincidence. This is kind of what I feel like you're telling me to do. So you're telling me you want me to show you that I want you more. So I'm going to give you this time. Instead of opening up and playing on my phone, instead of doing all the things that I, I could do on lunch, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend some time with you. So that day, I, I talked to God on my lunch break, and I let him talk to me. I, I, I felt to listen to a sermon, and so uh, I got on Apostolic Classics in Vault, and I listened to a sermon by Scott Graham. And I felt God speak to me through that message, and it was something that I needed to hear. And then today, on my lunch break, I spent time talking to God. I started listening to another message, but didn't have time to finish it. It was a much more long-winded message. And I plan to continue doing that, but, but I still feel like God is asking more from me. It's not just that hour that I spend on lunch, especially since, you know, I, I'm not able to dedicate that full hour of that time because I'm going and I'm, I'm at least eating or, or doing something like that. You know, there, there are days where I can fast uh, food, and, and I've done that, but often now, I, I honestly, I'll be honest with you, I don't fast food that often very much. If I fast anything, um, it would be uh, social media and uh, my video streaming services, uh, and anything to do with mobile devices. Uh, that's what I spend more time on, so I feel like if I'm going to fast something, that's more of a sacrifice to me than it is to miss a meal. I miss breakfast most every morning, so it's easy for me to miss a meal. So I feel like God is asking more from me than just spending 30 or 45 minutes on my lunch break listening to a sermon and talking to him. So what I want to do here tonight is share that with you. I've asked you how much you'll settle for. What, what price will you take from the enemy in order to betray Jesus? Is it, is it like me? Is it just a, a few minutes on social media? Is it a few minutes of watching Netflix or, or something else? Is it a few minutes of playing a game? Is it uh, going out and spending time with friends and, or tarrying uh, at a restaurant after service talking about, I mean, whatever, when you could be going at home and spending time in your daily Bible? Is it uh, going out and working from sun up to sundown and not taking any time out of that work to spend with God? Are, are you so dedicated to your job? I mean, what, what is it? What is the cost to you? Is it family time? Is it time with your wife or your husband or your kids? Is it time with your parents? Is it time with your friends? Uh, what time is it? Uh, what cost is it? Is it money? What is it to you that, that the enemy is throwing in your face and saying, what will it take for you to betray him? I'm willing to give that to you. For Judas, it was a bag of silver. 30 pieces of silver. Feel that, Brother Patton. Doesn't feel like a whole lot, does it? It's pretty light. For a bag of coins, pretty light. There are 30 coins in there. I, I got them from the bank today. Counted them out myself. Now, it's probably not worth what it was worth to Judas. There are some silver coins in here, half dollars. Altogether, in currency, it's $15. You got 30 half dollars in here. Some of those are silver, so their value could be increased a little bit more. But it's probably not what it would have cost to Judas at that time. 
But is it, is it money that entices you? Is that what you would betray him for? Think about that for a moment. I'm getting ready to close. Music, you can come on up. What is it? What is your price? Pastor, your price isn't going to be the same as my price. Brother Mike, I love you. Your price isn't going to be the same as mine. We share the same name, but that doesn't mean we share the same price. Emily, Madeline, you're going to have a different price even than each other. The sad part of all of this is that Judas never found that place of repentance. Judas never found recompense for his price. He never found forgiveness for his betrayal. I believe it was offered to him. I believe he had the chance. There's a scripture in the Gospels, if you read, that says the Lord, when he arose, appeared to the twelve. I don't know if Judas immediately went out and hanged himself. I, I, I don't know. Uh, that verse that says that he appeared to the 12 gives me hope that Jesus may have sought a place for Judas and that Judas didn't take it. I, I don't know. I don't know. You interpret that however the Lord deals with you to interpret it. But Judas didn't take it. He didn't find that place of repentance. But we all have a chance tonight to find that place. When we bring our silver back to the sanctuary and cast it down and scream in pain, that we have betrayed the innocent blood, that innocent blood was shed so that it could cover that betrayal, so that it could cover our sins, so that it could bring forgiveness and healing to us. So tonight, if you would stand with me, I'm going to open up this altar. And for those of you who want to come, as you come, Think about a time when you've gone back on your word or you've betrayed Jesus or you've betrayed his blood. You've, you know, he, we've repented before. I'm looking out on the crowd. And as far as I know, everybody in here has received the Holy Ghost. I don't know if any of you haven't. If you haven't, now is the time to get it. Now is the time to receive it. It is a gift for everyone. But if you have had it, that doesn't mean that you're, you're perfect. And so we've all betrayed the blood that was shed for us. We've all messed up. Again and again and again. And so tonight, we have an opportunity to make it right yet again. And we have a chance to make a commitment that when we repent this time, that instead of turning back and, and getting that back out of the blood, that whatever he buries in the blood, instead of turning around and, and picking it back up out of the blood, because that's the only way that, that you get it back, is if you pick it back up. Once the blood covers it, it's gone as far as Jesus is concerned. You're the one that has the power to draw it back out. So tonight our commitment is when we repent and leave that under the blood, that we do leave that under the blood, that we lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. 
and that we reach for it, that we press for it. So again, this altar is open. Come from all sides. If you feel a call to the Lord, if you feel a time, I ask that you would you would pray a prayer of repentance and that you would recommit yourselves to God. God, I, I know I've failed you. I, I know that I have fallen for a small price at times. God, I know that that the enemy hasn't had to try very hard. But God, sometimes the enemy doesn't even have to try at all. I do it myself. And God, I ask you right now to forgive me, Lord. Let your blood wash over me, oh God. Blot out my sins. Blot out my iniquities, oh Lord. Write my name in your book, oh God. Blot out the sins that are written, oh Lord. Cover them with your blood, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. Thank you for shedding it for me. Thank you, Jesus, for baptizing me with your spirit, O oh God. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would forgive me, O oh Lord, that you would redeem me, Father, one more time. And God, now I commit myself to you, O oh Lord. I've prayed this prayer of repentance, God. I'm not going to let it stop here, O oh Lord. Lord Jesus, I'm reaching out to you. I want to know you more. I am commit myself to you, O oh Lord. All you have asked is that I give myself to you, O oh Lord. And so I surrender to you, Father. I surrender to you. I am yours. I am yours, Father. I will not seek to betray you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, I commit myself to you, Father. Once again, once again, Father. Jesus, I'm going to walk forward. I'm going to take everything that I've heard tonight, O oh God. Lord Jesus, I'm going to apply it to my life. I'm going to take your word and hide it in my heart that I might not sin against you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father, for speaking to me. Oh, thank you for opening my eyes, oh Lord, for opening my ears. Thank you, Jesus, for coming and dwelling inside my heart. Lord Jesus, thank you for making, Lord, me a part of your family, oh God. Thank you for naming me as one of your own, oh Lord, for taking me as your son as your heir. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you for your spirit, oh God. Let it wash over me, Father. Let it fill me, oh Lord, until I overflow, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes,
out in 